Hey, thank you very much for joining us for a special edition with the one and only Mr. Gerald Salente, Trends Journal and the TrendsResearch.com. Um, I am honored to be uh, joined on this day, the November 5th, to talk about everything that happened before the election, um, the polls in, in the heart of the nation and how the Trends Journal and the Trends Magazine called it really, really good and what Gerald Salente thinks right now about what's coming up in the next few days and months as we enter into December 8th and, and Safe Harbor Day and then January inauguration. Uh, Gerald, thank you very much for, for being our guest today. Well, thank you for having me. I would like to start with, um, ex with you explaining a little bit the backdrop in the last few months and how um, you believe the polls didn't understand the polls of the country again uh, the polls, not understanding the polls um, of the nation, and what you have been able to figure out as a trends researcher um, that these polls cannot um, uh, cannot make mistakes. And man, did markets believe the blue swip? Um, because you're seeing uh, an entire different behavior from the markets right now. So I give you the floor, and please uh, tell us a little bit about how this came to be. Well, go back to 2016. The polls did the same exact thing. And this is from our Trends Journal back then. We said that, um, we, we went on to say that Trump would be the, um, would, would win the election. And we said that Trump is an odds on favorite at this time. This was back in May and then in August, we said Trump will win the presidential race. It was totally against the polls. It's right there in black and white in the magazine, 2016. And then this year, just go back to the one we put out on election day before the polls closed. We said that this race is going to be too close to call. And we had the headlines from the New York Times, from the Wall Street Journal, from the Los Angeles Times, and all the big ones coming out that said they would have a 10% margin of victory over Trump, uh, Biden would have over Trump. It was anywhere between eight to 10%. And we said, there's no way this is going to happen. They're not trend forecasters. Polling is, is 20th century technology. Can you explain how polls work? Why do they get it so wrong? It, again, it's 20th century technology. Back in the day, they used to call up people. You didn't know who was calling. And they got about a 36% response rate when okay. they called up and asked people. Now okay. that's down to like around lower than 6%. Okay. So they're getting nobody. And, and then the other thing that we wrote, and we made it clear in the current edition of the Trends Journal before the polls closed, that a lot of Trump supporters would not say they're voting for him yeah. because of the fear. No. You can't, you can't, you're, you, people are afraid to put up Trump signs because they're afraid that their houses would be burned down or they'd be <laughs> destroyed or whatever. Yeah. And they didn't want the confrontation. Yeah. It's an antiquated system. Sure. And when are people going to get it in their heads? The facts are there. How many more times? Oh, oh, and the arrogance that they pull it off with, too. I mean, you go for the last several months, these little jerks with these, you know, telling us how accurate these are and why this is voter suppression. It was, and I'm a political atheist. I did not vote in this election. I don't vote for lesser of two evils. That's not who I am. The last person I voted for president was Ron Paul. <laughs> so I'm not taking a position in this. I'm a political atheist. And I made it clear I was voting for Ron Paul in 2012. I said it clearly so that there wouldn't be any surprises coming from me. And I said the reasons why because he was against war and other issues that I'm against. But anyway, I'm not, so I'm, what I'm saying is I'm not saying this as from a positional standpoint. The 
they, it's suppression because the people that would say, ah, Trump doesn't have a shot at this. I'm not going to go out to vote. That also hurt his chances. And now the voting thing, it's a joke. You look at the charts, you see him out of Wisconsin, out of Michigan, out of Pennsylvania. Trump is leading, Biden's behind, and all of a sudden there's a straight line up. They just counted 120,000 votes in Wisconsin, another 130 and 120 in the other states, around those over 100,000 votes. And you know how many Trump got in each one of those spikes? None. Yeah. None. Yeah. You know, what am I, six years old? Who are you talking to over here? <laughs> you know, really. And by the way, I want to make this 100% clear to everyone that's listening. I began my career at a graduate school running political campaigns in Westchester County in New York State, the richest county in America at the time. Okay. I worked on a mayoral campaign. The guy, Angelo Martinelli, became the longest running mayor in Yonkers history. I worked on district attorneys, state senators. They sent me up to Albany because I was so great at this. I designed and instructed American politics and campaign technology and taught it at St. John's University. I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate. I left after one session because it is not in my character to suck up and bow down to political clowns. And that's all it is. I was on the inside of a two-bit freak show. The little low-life pieces of garbage crap with attitudes that wanted to be class president, the head of the student council, that's who runs for office. And those are the little crapsters that don't make it that are the ones that run the operations. My boss was a great guy, a wonderful man. You know, I, I'm not speaking down against him at all. He was a wonderful guy, Al Abrams. Very kind, generous, and open-minded. But the whole system is totally corrupt. So this, how they're counting votes and all of this, it's a total fraud. So this is going to the Supreme Court. And if they think you had an issue in counting you know, hanging chads back in 2000 in Florida, you ain't seen anything yet. So we don't know who's going to win for a long time. Interesting. So you think this is going to be contested for, for weeks, uh, perhaps even uh, oh, months. Yeah. We won't know. We won't know for a while. We won't know. We won't know before elect. It'll be just before election day is my best estimate of when we'll know. Wow. Okay. Well, that's, that's a big deal. I want to ask you about um, the, basically the, the heart of this election, because survey after survey, not polls, but surveys of uh, Biden voters said, look, if it was Biden or if it was someone else, as long as it's not Trump, that's what you have on one hand. We, we know that Biden is not a competent uh, candidate that I'm not speaking for myself. I'm speaking as this voter. We know that he will probably not run again in 2024. We know this is a transition candidate, a transition president, but we do just don't want Trump. On the flip side, you have people that would love to see Trump in office until 2040. What is this about? What is this election about? What is the heart of the essence of this battle between um, this part of the country and that part. What are they finding about? What is the definition of America that these people can't stand and these people really want? Where are these values that are really now at, at odds with each other? And it seems like they can't even compromise a little bit. What, what is- it's, But it's the same thing in every country. Where do you see it different? You know, it's been going on forever. I mean, name the country and name the name the name the, the split between everybody, and the facts don't matter. I mean, how anybody could associate themselves with a political party to me is, you know, grow up. Look at these freaks, and look at the freaks that they kept voting in. I mean, it's just more the same freak show in a country near you. You know, you, know, you got Boris Johnson, Merkel, Macron. I mean, look at the look at this junk. Bolsonaro. I mean, it's all over the all over the world. 
And so people get caught up in their political ideologies. Just like when they started this COVID war, we said you watched everybody obey orders and march off without any of the facts. It's the same way they hiled Hitler, marched to Mussolini and salute Stalin. Look like that, you control people. People don't think for themselves. And so the, the, the Trump supporters, they don't know, you know, like his tax deals only help the rich, according to the Tax Policy Center. 82% of them went, uh, went to the 1%. You know, they don't know what's going on in Iran and Venezuela. Oh, yeah, let's get there. They don't know the details. You know, they, 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 again, you know, they like him because they hate the other guy. And the other ones don't even like their guy, but just they hate Trump. I mean, because anybody with a brain and a heart and a soul, I mean, what has Biden brought, in, like Trump said, in 47 years? You know, what war did he need to support? You know, what, you know, with the, the, the whole trade wars, and all, they, they're brought to you by the Democrats under the Clinton administration. So it's not like the people know the facts of what's going on. They believe in their political religion. It's as simplistic as that. I want to share screen with you, Gerald, and I want you to tell me what you think about the power that Twitter has in this election um, over what's going on. It started with Hunter Biden, and now it's it's basically every tweet that goes out of either Trump or his aides and such. It has a disclaimer attached to it that this might have false information or misleading information, uh, not supported, et cetera. Um, we, we've seen the, um, you know, the, the debates with uh, Ted Cruz and whatnot, where he's asking him, who elected you to be the enforcement officer of, of all of this? Um, I, why is Twitter so powerful? And how does this uh, impact elections? Because obviously, Jack Dorsey doesn't think he can impact elections. It's, it's impacting very big. It's not only Twitter, it's everybody. It's, it's, it's all of them. And they've taken over. We've been writing about this for years. So, you know, it, it's just going to keep getting worse. And there's not much you could do about it unless they start breaking up the monopolies, which they're afraid of doing at some point. So um, you also see, I got, I got on LinkedIn because I put up a... Uh, this is, by the way, in, in Hebrew, but every one of these is, is hiding what he's saying, and, and you can click display here, and it says part or all of this tweet is uh, misleading and could alter the elections process, et cetera. It's very interesting. And yeah, I, put up, I put up a cover. You go to the Trends yeah. Journal, and we had a cover of, of toilet bowls and with a funnel coming down, going into a guy's head. You know, it's a cartoon. And it said, brainwashed with crap. <laughs> okay. Okay. And yeah. they banned it on LinkedIn. They, I said that li that liars, cowards, freaks, and fools are are selling are, are destroying our liberty, love, joy, and freedom. How can we suck up to them? I was in response to someone that I that wrote something. They censored that. They call that bullying and harassment. That I said, how can we suck up to liars, cowards, freaks, and fools who are destroying our liberty, love, joy, and beauty? That's, that's harassment and bullying. Does anybody get it? It's a total takeover. Look at the freaks. Of, look at that guy, Dorsey. Look at Zuckerberg. Look, look at Cook. Look at these clowns. And they're in charge. And the, again, all aboard. Put on those masks, next train to Auschwitz. Don't you question us. You will do what you're told. We will tell you what to say, how to say it, and when to say it, and where to say it. You got it? Now get on the train. It's right in front of our eyes. How much more proof do people need? Look at the dictates they're forcing on us all over the world. One issue after another. Yeah, these masks, right? These masks that everybody wears. Yeah. You see the reporters with a microphone in front of their face and nobody around them, and, they, and they're talking into this thing. Brainwashing. 
don't read, don't read the label where it says that they're totally ineffective for diseases and infection. Don't read that. <laughs> Just put on the damn mask. Interesting. It's right there for everybody to read. And everybody obeys, obeys, obeys. And if you don't obey, we'll report you. Look what the police are doing, locking up people all over the world. In Australia, the woman yesterday in, in, in uh, the United Kingdom, in the UK, she wanted to take her 97-year-old mother out of a nursing home because she couldn't go see him at her. She took him out. The police arrested her and took the mother back and brought her into the nursing home. One after another. Doesn't, don't people see what's going on over here? The global economy has been destroyed. How many businesses aren't going to reopen? All the bars, all the restaurants, all the hotels, and all the hotels owned by the smalls are gone. And the bigs are going to gobble up more and more. The bigs will get bigger and everybody else will get poorer. And all you become is a plantation worker on slave land here. And don't forget to wear your mask. So what is the solution for the average person? What is the next steps that per people should take in order to change these circumstances? Number one, get in the best shape you can, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Work out. Do the best you can, double up on what you're doing. Number two, learn what's going on and stop sucking in the crap brought to you by the mainstream media. What mainstream media? There's no journalists anymore. They're corporations running the show right in front of everybody's eyes. It hasn't changed. Remember the main. Yeah, that's what back going back to the, you know, when they, when they took over Cuba over there in America, they, they, the Hearst magazine, the Hearst newspaper chain lied the Americans into that and they haven't stopped the chains. And that's why we put out the Trends Journal. What do you got? 96 pages, the last journal, without one advertisement, only the truth and trends. So learn the truth, learn to think for yourself and unite with other people to do it and support organizations that support the truth. That's what you have to do or else you're gone. You're dead. Look what they, could you imagine being a young person now? I got some stupid crap head telling me the same ones that had us hiding under desks in case an atom bomb went off when I was a kid to tell you now you're a college student to stay in your room, don't go out, don't go out and play. Bars are closed, no hugging, no dancing, no kissing, no squeezing, no singing. Can't people see what's going on? And then you look at the virus death rates of people one to 20 years old. 99.997 recovery rate, according to the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention. You got it. You ever get sick before and get better? It's right there. Oh, one, for, one to 50, 99.8% recovery rate. And who's dying? Over half the people who died of the virus came from nursing homes. Type 2 diabetes after that. Obesity, lung disorders, respiratory ailments. And yet they lock down everybody. And you got the dictators in charge in this country, a state, and a city near you. Yeah, no, I, I, with, with everything that's going on with the pandemic, um, very early on, I, I really sensed that this is, um, that these are broad measures for something that needs a specific solution. Uh, you got it. Obviously, um, a person- Take care of the elderly. Exactly. If you're sick, you're not doing, those are the people to take care of. Leave me the hell alone. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, with, with what's happening right now, though, um, with governments around the world, Europe, where I'm at, actually in Israel, that they uh, um, had a big lockdown in September that they're gradually releasing right now. Um, total death cases in our country, I think, is 2,500. 
since the 2,500 s- out of out of how many people? Yeah, what about 10 million? What do you got? Eight, eight. million? How many people? Yeah, how many? Eight million. Eight. Nine million. Eight. 2,500 out of nine million. March, eight. April, May, June, July, August, September, October. Here we are in November. Yeah. 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 Hey, how many Yemen's? How many, how many people in Yemen were killed last week? Yeah, how many of them are dying from starvation, from a wonderful war being launched against them? Oh, the people in Iraq are revolting again, huh? Oh, they only killed a million of them on a war based on lies. Hey, how, how is wonderful up there in Afghanistan? Hey, how about taking a trip to Libya and all the other, they, they destroy that place too and killing people. But we won't talk about that kind of murder. No, we're going to go about 2,500 people dying. It's the same thing everywhere. The numbers add up to nothing in a global population that, of 7.8 billion people. Yeah. What, what, what do you have? In China, 1.4 million died last year of air polluted related diseases. That's why they wear these things and everybody's gone the Chinese way. They obey. Yeah, very interesting. I, and I want to ask you, what do you think will happen if in a few days time, a few weeks time, we do get Biden as a president. What do you think will happen in terms of measures? Because with Trump, it was very uh, easy to understand that he believes that uh, COVID-19 is um, not to be um, treated as as something that is more important than than balancing it out with other things. So uh, obviously, We've seen that approach from him, and that is what um, his advisors, his scientific team, et cetera, have uh, concluded, and that, that is the message that he broadcasted throughout this time. Um, I want to ask you, what do you think will happen if Biden wins? I, the, the federal government is not going to do a lot over it. You know, they, it's, states have more jurisdiction than the federal government over this, so it's not going to do much at all. Yeah. But what, if Biden wins, you can see what's going on. The more, the more that he gets votes is the higher gold prices are going and silver prices. <laughs> yeah. yeah what did what gold spike today? You know, about $50 an ounce. Yeah. You know, I mean, they can't, they only an imbecile can't see what's going on over here. <laughs> and they do it in every country. The UK just announced today they're going to be pumping in a couple of hundred billion more into the joint too. So they're printing up all this digital money backed by nothing and printed on nothing. Bitcoin, look where Bitcoin is. Yeah. It's about 15,000 now. Yeah. You know, we said this was going to happen. It word for word, word for word, word for word, we wrote about it in the Trends Journal before it happened. Last last 2019, June, we call the beginning of the gold bull run. It was $1,332. This past June, when silver was at $17.50 an ounce, we said it's going to spike faster than gold percentage-wise. And what is it now? About you know, $25 an ounce. Hit 27. And the same with Bitcoin. We said when it was floating between nine and 10, nine, nine and seven, didn't go but in the six. We follow this thing every day. We said, okay, when it hit 12, here it goes, boom. It's solid now, went back and forth for a while. Now Bitcoin's going to take off. The people know that what they're doing is just as much fraud as everything else that they're doing. So that's why the people that invest in these assets can understand what a sham the whole thing is. Very interesting. Gerald, I want to ask you, um, I want to give you uh, the floor to openly talk about uh, the most important uh, dangers that you see going forward in the next few months, both for investors, but also for the average person. What are some things to anticipate here that people would benefit from if they were subscribers to your Trends Journal or or, uh, in case they missed the last one and they are Uh, Evan readers. The number one thing we said was real estate back in February. We said people are going to be leaving big cities and going to suburbs and exurbs, beyond suburbs. And that's exactly what's happened. So commercial real estate is going to continue to dive in big cities. The biggest thing to watch right now is what's going on not far from you. And that is with Turkey and their involvement with Azerbaijan and what's going on between Azerbaijan and Armenia. Okay. Turkey's involvement in Libya 
Turkey's involvement in Syria, and now Turkey getting into territorial disputes with Greece over water rights, and they want to get that hydrocarbons out of that water okay. so they could use it themselves. So what do you Turkey, think will happen? Turkey's leader keeps hitting all-time lows against the dollar. Turkey also relies on tourism, and there isn't any. Okay. And Erdogan has made it very clear in very different ways that he's looking for return of the Ottoman Empire. And that's what we're concerned about, is that violence breaking out in the Middle East and the, and the Caucasus. Okay. And if that happens, and then, of course, there's the Iranian issue. That's, that's what we're looking at as a flashpoint that could really turn things very dangerous down. Do you the think other it, one, it has to do with Biden or Trump? In other words, do you think... Not that, nothing to do with either of them. Okay. They're out of the picture. They don't count. Okay. And the other one is um, the money pumping scheme. They're just going to keep pumping more money in, and that's going to get, again, again, very, very, very bullish for gold and silver and precious metals and, and Bitcoin. Number, the other one that's very, very important to watch are the riots and demonstrations that are going to be going on in America. Because if Trump wins, you're going to see riots breaking out big time. Now, I mention this because of the bigger part of the trend. All the small businesses that have been destroyed already, all over the world. As you well know, they've locked down again in France, in parts of Germany, much of Germany, mm -hmm. in, yeah. in Ireland, in England, in Greece, Greece Czech Republic, Poland, uh, Belgium. So all of these lockdowns, Spain, Italy, mm -hmm. the dev economic devastation is, is beyond the imagination of the imbeciles that have done it. And again, they <laughs> don't care. They don't care. They get their money. They never, most of these people never worked a day in their lives. They've been sucking off the public tit their whole lives. So they don't worry about income, benefits, pensions, health care. They have it all. They're in the government. So they don't understand the consequences of the wars that they launch, just like they don't, never do, whether it's the the Vietnam War, the Iraq War, the Afghan War, whatever war, Korean War, they don't have exit strategies. So I'm talking about violence increasing. Yeah. I'm talking about people moving out of cities. Matter okay. of fact, one of the most read items in our Trends Journal is our survivalism in close combat article by Brad Steiner, who's one of the top close combat guys in America. He was the teacher of my teacher. And I used to chat my own school for many years as well. This mm -hmm. guy, people want to know how to defend themselves when it all comes down. And so that's what we're telling people the most important things are. You better start looking out for yourself in every way you can and every which way you can and grow the hell up and stop looking for a bunch of freaks called governments to tell you what to do and how to do it. Because if you're doing that, you're in trouble. You're, you're right next to New York. So just in closing, um, can you update everyone on what's happening right now in New York City and whether or not you think New York City is going to be New York City again? One mistake I've made over the years in forecasting trends, beginning with the crash of 1987, is I thought when things went down, they would never go back up. And they do. They come up with new schemes undreamed of. No, there's no such thing as negative interest rates, zero interest rate policy, quantitative easing. They, they artificially pump things back up. Having said that, this is very different. And again, I'm a Bronx, New Yorker. I'm a real New Yorker. I'm not like, you know, yeah, I, I'm up in Kingston, New York, which is 90 miles north. And I see people and they come up and they, I, you know, near my building, there's a you can Google it up, Vogue magazine, Kinsley, K-I-N-S-L-E-Y. It's a hotel, an old bank that they turned into a boutique hotel and a beautiful restaurant. And I have a building right next to it. And I have the most historic three corners, uh, corners in America, the only place with pre-revolutionary war stone buildings. It's right next to that uh, on, on the most historic four corners of America. So I see people and I say, where are you from? They go, 
We're from New York. As an old Bronx guy would have said, you know, F you, what are you talking about? <laughs> You're from New York. New York isn't New York anymore. The New Yorkers are the real New York, very few real New Yorkers left. They're exiting. It's a ghost town. Midtown is dead town. There's no neon lights on Broadway. It's gone. The, 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 the museums, they're getting 40 people a day and like this kind of thing, you know, 25% capacity. Theater isn't going to open up. Ballet, oh, we may open up in the spring of 2021. It's gone. There's no theater district. All the restaurants, dead. Boarded up places everywhere. I'm mentioning that, I, I, again, I remember when 9-11 obviously happened. People moved away, very few. People went, started going back to work right away. You know your occupancy rate on the, in, in offices is in New York? Between 10 and 15%. Ridership on the subways, 30%. Crime going up, homicides, robberies. People are afraid. Bloomberg did a study of 181 cities in America. The prices have gone up the most in Kingston, New York, where I am. This is the third Dutch settlement. There are more pre-revolutionary war buildings here than anywhere else. It's right on the Hudson River. It's beautiful. Do you think I'm happy the values of my properties are going up? I'm not at all. I liked it the better the way it was. So it, 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 so you ask me what's going on in New York, it's dead. It's not coming back for a while. Not for a long while. The, the very rich are moving out. They're, they're, now they're full time at the Hamptons. Hmm. They're moving back up to places in Connecticut, up here and on and on. So this isn't coming back for a long time because so many businesses have been destroyed all over the world. I mean, you've been to Paris. You go out at nine o'clock at night to eat. Now you close down at nine. And they're doing the same thing all over. So it's not coming back because of all the people's lives that have been destroyed. All the businesses that have been destroyed. That all their lives, people put every ounce of energy into creating. I'm the governor. I will tell you what to do. Take that constitution and bill of rights and shove it. And they're doing it all over the world in a country near you. Gerald, I know you're very passionate about these subjects and that you have a great um, a journal with a lot of artwork and, and you know, your magazine is, is quite uh, impressive. Can you tell a little bit more to people how they can access it uh, and, and whatnot? Yeah, just go to trendsjournal.com, trendsjournal.com. And, and, and it's not because it's my magazine and I'm saying it. <laughs> There's no other magazine like it in the world. We put every ounce of energy into making this happen. And we're not one of the big firms where it was, you know, we put this together with all our sweat and toil. Again, is it well over 90 pages this week, 92 pages last week no advertisements. And what we're telling people, this is what's going on. This is what it means. And this is what's next. And you might consider wanting to do this, 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 or that. We don't tell anybody what to do. The motto of the Trends Journal is think for yourself. We put out the information and we only put down facts, scientific data and hard facts. We're not selling agendas like the rest of them do. So if you want to prepare for the future, and I have to tell you, you better prepare for this because there's nothing like this. I'm at this for 40 years at best-selling books. And I'll put my track record against anybody in the world. And I don't say that in an arrogant way. Show me your work. Show me what you've been doing. Show me your magazine since 1991. And then we could begin talking. What's going on now, I've never seen anything like it in my life. Could never imagine this. And 
as someone looking ahead and everything, by the way, everything that's going on now with the economy, every, every, every inch of what's going on, we said would happen back in February and March. It's all there. So we're saying this so that we can help people look ahead and prepare and prevail what's going to be hell on earth unless we do something to change it. But it's going to be violent, it's going to be ugly, and you're going to see more and more political freaks robbing us of our freedom and power. And we also ask people to support us because we put our money where our hearts and minds are. We launched Occupy Peace. We had a Unite for Peace and Freedom rally on the 4th of July against the law, against the law, I did it. And I told a little governor over here in New York, you come down and stop me. No, no, leave your little goons behind and you try to stop me. And we had several hundred people come up on the 4th of July when everything was closed down and fear was at the heightest. And you know what? They told, everybody warned us not to do it. We did it. And I died from the virus and so did everybody else. So this is not Gerald Salenti. We all died from the Unite for Peace and Restore Freedom rally as they warned us that we would. Gerald, thank you very much um, for taking the time today. It was uh, really interesting and amazing to see how uh, passionate you are about making sure that people uh, get it. You know, my passion is being an American. It was once the land of the free. I couldn't be me if I was born in, in Alta Vela, Pino, Vico, Quince in Italy. I'm me because I'm a young kid growing up in the Bronx, learning how to be a man, how to fight for my freedom. And now I see it stolen from us and it breaks my heart. And so as I cry and it breaks my heart, I'm also a Napolitano. I go from crying to you screw with me, I'll slit your throat. So that's why I fight. I fight for freedom. And I don't like people trying to take it away from me. It's not the American way. This is not my America. Thank you very much, Gerald. Thank you.